symmetry. I love symmetry. I'm not sure exactly why, but I've loved it since I was a kid. Most children are messy and forgetful of their things. Not me. I knew everything has a place, and in my room, everything was right where it belongs. My parents didn't have it. My grandparents didn't have it either. Not a single person in my family had it. I started referring to it as it because I truly believe it's a thing inside of me. A stowaway that shouldn't be there but lives inside me. It's a need. A desire. A longing to be perfect. Perfect on both sides. As an adult, I'm at the point where I can't live my life normally. I can't keep a job. Women don't stay with me because they can't handle it. Honestly, I don't even care when they leave. They're messy and make things difficult. They roll over on my side of the bed instead of staying on their own. They leave dishes in one side of the sink but not the other. And I can't work anymore, so when they leave for the day, I have to stay home and fix everything. It's a relief when they leave for good. Feeling never lasts, though. Eventually, it comes back and finds something else that needs fixing. You may be asking, why would I seek out relationships to begin with if I can't stand them? It's, uh, well, it's, uh, hard for me to sleep in the middle of the bed all night without moving. Uh, other than the relationship problem, my life is pretty much in order. I say pretty much, but there is one last issue that must be dealt with. You see, I have what's called heterochromia iridium, or two different colored irises. My right eye was cornflower blue, my left pale green. Both my parents have cornflower blue eyes, my siblings and cousins as well. My green eye is the broken one. It makes me unbalanced. Every time I look at myself in the mirror, it just stares back at me. It's all I think about now. Everything is in its right place, except my green little mistake. It, it, it didn't hurt at first. When I dug the spoon under my eye, it didn't even hurt when it popped out and was hanging by my cheek. Was it shock that was keeping the pain away, or was, was it it? I snipped the optic nerve and plotted the warm fluids that was streaming down my face. My vision being cut in half it was a strange sensation. What was left of the dangling flesh I placed back in the now empty hole. I bandaged the wound, rinsed the spoon, and went to sleep. I woke up happy. I slept better than I had in years. It was finally done. I was fixed. I got out of bed and I stumbled to the bathroom. My body ached and my head was on fire. I flipped the switch in the bathroom and the light was blinding. I slowly removed the bandage that was soaked with blood and was sticking to my face like tape. When I looked up at the mirror, my stomach turned. Only then had I realized what I had done to myself, and I couldn't believe it. There was a hole in the left side of my face. But not the right. I was unbalanced again. It was much harder digging out the second eye. My hands were shaky, and when I dug the spoon in, I missed several times times, puncturing my pupil three times before I finally got it in to the right place. Once the eye popped out, I reached for my scissors to finish the job. The blood from the previous night had dried on the blades, so the scissors didn't cut very well. 
You know when you were a kid in elementary school and your teacher made you cut construction paper for our projects? <laughs> Did you ever try to cut too many pieces at once but the scissors couldn't take it? The blades would just kind of fold over each other and the paper would get pinned between them? <laughs> that, that's what happened with my eye. The optic nerve was pinned right between the two blades. It was stuck. And as I tried desperately and frantically to make it unstuck, I slipped on the blood and started falling to the floor. Reflexes kicked in and I let go of my eye to try to break my fall with my hand. The weight of the stuck scissors of my hanging eye was unbearable. I knew I couldn't stand it long enough to make it to the kitchen to get the knife. So I pulled. I pulled it straight out of my head. I felt the flesh tear from the inside of my skull. I felt it rip and spew liquids everywhere. I knew I was crying, but there was no telling the tears from the blood from the ocular fluid. When I heard the wet slap of flesh against the tile floor, I knew I was done. I knew it was done. I could live my life without having to see people's awful, messy, uneven lives. <laughs> the relief washed over me, and I knew it would last this time. I had never felt this way before. Never had this much hope. As I laid in my bathroom, on that cold, wet, sticky tile. I smiled for the first time in years. Dictated, but not read. <laughs>